We had uh, Mitt Romney coming out of the uh, out of Tuesday claiming a victory. But when you look at the delegate count, is that really the case? Is Mitt Romney did he really win as much on Tuesday as uh, as he wanted to claim he did? Well, in Arizona, he gets all 29 of the delegates there. It was a winner-take-all state, so that's a big win for him. But you're right. If you look at Michigan, he won the state narrowly by about three percentage points, uh, and that's all enough to get him a tie. So he got 15 delegates, and Rick Santorum got 15 delegates. So it's more a wash if you're looking at the delegate picture. Uh, you know, we've got Super Tuesday next Tuesday, and uh, that's going to be the big test for him. He's got uh, about five states heading into the ten that are voting, five of them. Look like he's going to probably get a pretty big edge, uh, and then it'll be a battle for Ohio, Tennessee, Georgia, uh, Oklahoma, and if he can do well, then it would probably, uh, you know, not necessarily put him on a glide path, but it would uh, solidify him for the the months ahead as we get into this kind of grinding battle over delegates. But you're right; if you look back at Tuesday, while we declared him the winner of both states, it was a little more muddled coming out of Michigan than uh, the initial results suggested. Right. My co-host here, who I rudely didn't introduce at the outset, David Weiner. <laughs> what do you think? When do you when when do you want to see this thing wind up? I mean, it's. Well, uh, I, I it, think it's it's very interesting. I mean, you're you're kind of testing what what the Republican Party really is standing for because Rick Santorum is pretty much a social issue uh, guy Mitt Romney is about economic policy and and says I want to be the CEO of America and so far neither of these guys uh, is neither of those those uh, ideologies is distinguishing itself uh, uh, with voters you know it seems to we seem to have this this tussle half the party likes the social conservative uh, the other half likes the, the the fiscal side it's been it's been the story of this campaign Patrick are, are we gonna know by Tuesday who the GOP nom, uh, nominee is or is this gonna go well past Super Tuesday I think it's really doubtful unless Mitt Romney performs better in a place like Georgia or Tennessee than we're expecting now I think best case scenario for him right now is that he wins five of those six states but because of the rules the RNC put in place You've got this proportional delegate uh, selection, in which case everyone's going to get a share. So we're just not, you know, no candidate is going to be able to build up a big enough lead coming out of Super Tuesday that it would be insurmountable for the others. Now, if Romney keeps incrementally building on the lead that he already has, and I think it's going to be over time very difficult for anyone to catch him, but I don't think we're going to see anything unequivocal coming out of Tuesday unless Mitt, Mitt Romney outperforms what expectations are right now. All right, man. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Patrick. <laughs> I'm calling you Mick. <laughs> we um, do look a familiar. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, JR loves my two two part question. So, uh, uh, so I have one for you. First one is this: the Super Tuesday really, to me, seems to be about Ohio because uh, we're talking about the industrial Midwest. We're talking about uh, a place where the economy is very important, and yet the polling shows that uh, that's pretty much a dead heat, just like Michigan was. Uh, it, and secondly, do you think either of these candidates is going to start uh, trying to grab some of the ground that uh, the, the, that the other candidate has? In something we had been talking about, you know, Rick Santorum with with sort of this uh, social conservative uh, ideology, and and Mitt Romney trying to focus more on the economy and uh, and the government. Well, to your first point, Ohio is definitely the crown jewel on Super Tuesday. Uh, I think it's it ranks second in delegates behind Georgia. But it is such a bellwether for the general election. It would be very difficult for Mitt Romney to make a case that he's the most electable Republican if he were to lose that state to Rick Santorum. To your second point, which kind of runs into the first, is what you've seen so far is that the demographic breakdown between these two candidates is pretty stark. Romney does very well with college educated. He does very well with the affluent, and he's doing very well with seniors. Rick Santorum, in contrast, seems to be doing really well with folks at the lower end of the economic scale. He does very well with the self-described very conservative voters, and he does very well for the Tea Party. Now, both men seem to be trying to make plays for the other's constituency, but so far it just hasn't worked. Uh, it does seem like the, the Republican electorate at this point is fairly bifurcated with the more conservative, tr traditional conservatives going in Rick Santorum's direction and kind of the business-friendly establishment types going for Mitt Romney. That has been, you know, Mitt Romney has focused most on the economy because I think he thinks that's his firmest footing heading into a general election showdown with Barack Obama. But he clearly is going to need to make inroads with these social conservatives, whether uh, both to get the nomination and then if he becomes the nominee. So I think 
we could see a little bit of that, although I think Boston, the folks in the, uh, the Romney High Command have been very reluctant to make overt overtures to those people just because uh, of what happened in 2008 when he pitched himself as a social conservative and no one bought it, and because I don't think they want to box themselves in for the general election. All right, Patrick, I have a feeling we're going to be talking to you more in, uh, in the next few days. That's very helpful. Thank I you very imagine. much. So.